What's going on, guys? Jason and Alex here for the Sackos. We got a fun one lined up today. We're going to be talking some waivers. We got a heck of a lot of COVID news going on. Uh, also, Will Fuller does drugs and uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Not the recreational kinds. So there's that. So it's Let's week 13 in. waivers, even though it's still week 12, even though it's not week 12 anymore, but it's week 13, but it's really not. And week 13 is going to last for like six weeks. And then next week will be week 14, even though week 13 won't be done. Let's do it. Couldn't have put it any better. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krogh. Let's go! Fantasy Football Sackos. Again, Jason, Alex here. Thank you guys so much for joining us. It's been a heck of a week 12. And uh, we got some interesting waivers here. Um... How you been, Alex? How did week 12 go for you? Any better than the first 11? I mean, it's it, it's been like a two, it's literally been a two week week 12, um, which is hilarious uh, in many respects, or at least to me, if I mean, the only reason I'm laughing is because otherwise I'd be crying, honestly, um, <laughs> being a, a commissioner in, in multiple leagues has been absolutely terrible and trying to trying to ride the rocky waters uh i am uh, 16 and 32 on the season which equates to a 33 percent winning percentage for those of you who uh are keeping math at home um so i am officially out of it in all four leagues which just sucks um so yeah here to uh educate the the sackos on um you know how to make your team better even though i don't listen to myself but thanksgiving was great um had a lot of mashed potatoes with cream corn on it so that that made my uh Made my stomach happy. Uh, turkey's delicious. And uh wish the football was a little bit better on Thursday or there was more football on Thursday, but it'll be okay. How are you? Uh, I'm great. And I'll just say that if you were hitting 33% in the majors, you'd be a Hall of Famer and you're a Hall of Famer in my book, Alex. So that's what really matters. Um, Sack daddy, baby. Thanksgiving was great. Uh, great seeing family. Uh, football wasn't so great. What can you do when the Steelers Ravens get postponed six days eventually? Um, <laughs> oh, that's going to be such a mess. Play to J.K. Talk about. Dobbins, apparently. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's one of the things everybody's dealing with is Dobbins and Ingram were supposed to be ineligible after both testing positive for COVID one week ago today. But now, because the way the quarantine works is if they test negative after 10 days, they become eligible again. And because the game was postponed six days from last Thursday to now this Wednesday, it's the 10 days. And Dobbins and Ingram are now eligible. What are you doing about people who would like to use Dobbins and Ingram in their lineups? Because I mean, a lot of people like the, a lot of people are, you know, you can play players, but you have to designate a backup. But these players had the out designation and tested positive on Monday for a Thursday yeah. game. So there was no way that anybody designated a backup for these guys. So do you think that you should be able to play them or do you think that managers should just bite the bullet and have to stick with them on their bench? Or do you have to... I you can't be expected to clear a bench spot for them, though, right? Because they're going to be if if they're active Thursday, then you're supposed to clear a bench spot for or Wednesday when they play. Then you're supposed to have a bench spot for them and they're just chilling in your IR spot. But everybody else has already played, so you can't even put them on your bench. So you got an illegal yeah, IR just spot. Just for full disclosure, we're uh, we're talking about this somewhat because this happened to pop up in our league where. It just so happens that you have J.K. Dobbins and started Brian Hill and you would have started Dobbins uh, over Brian Hill um, because everybody knows that you couldn't love J.K. Dobbins more unless he was sitting next to you. Um, and so I um, I just don't like uh, I've kind of gone with the if it's fair, you sh you just got to make exceptions for it rule um, all year. Figure it out, like you just kind of bend over backwards for people. Um, you know, in most situations, it's like, hey, if J.K. Dobbins was healthy, 
then the entire time you would have started J.K. Dobbins and you would have said, hey, if J.K. Dobbins doesn't play, I would like to start Brian Hill. That's totally reasonable. That's the way we've been doing it in our league all year. In this situation, J.K. Dobbins was obviously declared out, um, had an out designation. In no universe would you have ever said, hey, I'm starting J.K. Dobbins, even though he's out. Um, and if he doesn't play, I'm starting Brian Hill. That, that would have never happened in any world because it wasn't even a thought that he was ever going to play. Um, so because of that, it, it's it's just tricky, right? Um, I mean, I've always gone with the you want it to be as fair for everybody as possible. And so with people that have, you know, Mark Ingram or J.K. Dobbins and they would have started him. And it's not just because Brian Hill scored five and a half points in a half PPR league. Um that I, I think those people should be able to make the change. Um, but again, it's a, it's a tough call. Yeah. And I mean, if I, if not even just me, but like the rest of my roster has already played and is locked. So I can't move anybody to take him off. So for the people that want you to say that you can't play him, then that would mean that you would, essentially have an illegal roster by having somebody that's playing in an IR spot. So it's like, you kind of want, like you can't have it both ways where you don't want to give them the flexibility, but you also want them to have an illegal roster with a guy that's playing in an IR spot, just because you don't want him (laughs) in the game. Like you understand what I'm like. That's a whole little different caveat to this. Yeah. That's something I hadn't even thought of about Honestly, I just want the game to get canceled and we can just move on. Just, just that move make on it easier next week. Um, but by all reports, the the Ravens and Steelers are playing Wednesday night, week twelve. It's um, not even nighttime because the so, ball ser- the Christmas or, ceremony, yeah, Wednesday afternoon, three thirty. Yeah, but yeah, it would definitely two thirty central. There you go. It would definitely make it easier though on all of our GMs. Like, shout out to GMs everywhere for having to deal with this mess because I am so glad that I took a year off from hosting my league. And I'm not dealing with any of this from a GM or commissioner standpoint because yeah. I just the commission, Man, the year of commissioners have gone to. And I had 200 points dropped on me this week with Will Fuller and Watson and Derrick Henry. And then I have to deal with this shit. Like, <laughs> good look. Like, like, oh my God. Like, just. I, I want nothing more than for the season to end because I'm two and 10. Um, but then having to deal, you know, I'm going to be eliminated from the playoffs and this stuff's still going to be happening of how, <laughs> Hey, can you pay attention so you can get the right people in my lineup? If a game were to get can't like, I, I'm just, well, I'm putting this on tape now so that we can play it back when it's week 16 and the chiefs game gets canceled and people have Mahomes and Travis Kelsey in a title game and the game's canceled. And I'm going to have no idea what to do. And I'm, it's just going to be the perfect culmination to the fantasy football season when so I'm specifically calling the Chiefs. The Chiefs game is going to get canceled or Mahomes <laughs> is going to test positive. And somehow they're going to cancel that game and it's just going to go crazy. So let the record show. It is uh, November 30th at 9.46 p.m. I'm going on record right now. Week 16, Chiefs are the are the canceled game and all hell is going to break loose. So, all right. Waivers time. Or more newsy stuff. Whatever. I don't know. I'm sick what? of talking about COVID. It's, it, it's just suck. It, God. Let's get into some waivers, shall we? First up, we're going to talk some quarterbacks. We have Ryan Fitzpatrick up. Uh, took the start this week because (laughs) yeah i know right of all people um took the start this week took the start this week because oh god here we go we're starting early Tua was not good enough to go um and so ryan fitzpatrick was able to post a 24 of 39 for 257 yards and two scores plus three rushes for 10 yards on the ground against the Jets here in week 12. Um, he targeted Devontae Parker 14 times, um, which is yeah. very nice. But uh, both of his scores went to the tight end position. So there is that. 
Um, he's only rostered in 21 and a half percent of leagues. I don't know if Tua is going to be able to go next week with his thumb injury. Um, are you spending any fab on Fitz magic? Do you believe in Fitz magic? No, I don't think so. You can probably pick him up from free. Uh, enough, enough people have quarterbacks that are um, rostered. He, he was just be a flyer. I'd be surprised if somebody's picking up a second quarterback for any reason at this point. Um, by weeks this week, uh, there are two with, with Tampa Bay and Carolina. So maybe somebody looking for a, a Brady replacement. Uh, Fitzpatrick would, would fit the bill, especially against Cincinnati this upcoming week. Um, also, don't forget that Gasicki had his usual five targets. So, um, you know, that was the same with Tua and the same with Fitzpatrick. So his value didn't go up or down all that much, although he did have a touchdown, which obviously helped. Um, so, yeah, it seems like Fitzpatrick always kind of delivers when he's in a plus matchup. Cincinnati would fit that description. He delivered against the Jets. I would have no reason to doubt why he wouldn't against the Bengals. Um, I personally started Fitzpatrick up and started him over Roethlisberger this week once I knew that he was playing. Um, I, I think that he's a he's a fine play going forward. I don't think you need to spend any fab on him, though. Yeah, I agree. I mean, especially in a spot start against the Bengals this week, I think he makes a fine streamer play. So that is our QB stream of the week. Let's move on to some RBs, shall we? Um, first up, we have Cam Akers, who dropped a nine for 84 and one touchdown line this week for the Rams against San Francisco. Uh, rostered in 28% of ESPN leagues. Are you spending any fab on Cam Akers? I love, again, if, if you, from a couple weeks ago when we did waivers and I said, who's the next crappy player that we're talking about? And it happened to be Cam Akers. Um, you know, since then, last week he had a touchdown. This week he had a touchdown. Um, so back to back weeks with a touchdown, one receiving, one. Um, on the ground he's he's not really a receiving threat so that that recept, receiving touchdown was definitely kind of an anomaly um i don't know like he he's kind of a he's kind of a guy that seems like he might be coming on at least a little bit um i i don't know who to trust in that backfield like henderson's been okay um and it's kind of seemed like they were giving him the ball all the time you know weeks like five through 10 or, or, you know, just conceptually, I don't have Henderson on in my rosters. Um, but you look at his last three game logs, uh, seven for 28 and a, and a touchdown, uh, week 11 against Tampa Bay, eight carries, five yards, two catches, four yards last week in San Francisco, 10 for 19, both back to back 1.9 weeks and half PPR. Um, so maybe they're starting to shift away from him a little bit and, and get to Cam Akers. Um, I mean, if you think that Cam Akers could be a league winner, um, I could understand why you might just go all in on Cam Akers um, as a flyer um, because he has been their most productive back for, for two weeks running now. Um, and they have pretty plus matchups. Uh, especially week 15, 16 when they're against the Jets and then Seattle. So um, I I get it. Um, I don't know how much fab you should be bidding. I think it comes to like for me this time of year. Like I either go zero bids on people or I go all in on someone um, and you just have to decide if you think that they're the all in person or, you know, a dollar more than the next person that has the highest fab. If you're, if you know what I'm saying. So like my strategy comes down to these, you know, next three weeks where I save my sauce for, you know, waiting for the injury or waiting for the running back that pops up or wide receiver that would pop up due to injury to make sure that I have more fab than the next closest person to get them. I don't know if Cam Akers fits that billing or not, but I right. could understand why you think that he might. So, okay, I guess. I am pro Cam Akers. I'm I'm mostly pro that schedule, but I also feel like Cam Akers is the best back in that backfield. Um, I really like the matchups going forward. I definitely think that he should be rostered. That really isn't a question for me in, a, in at least 12 team leagues. I feel like he should definitely be rostered. As for how much yeah, fab no I would spend on him, I would try to get him 
for cheap just because one week, I mean, he's he's available in 70% of leagues. One week, I don't think should send everybody rushing to the waiver wire, but those matchups are pretty. I would probably do 10 to 15%. I would do 10 to 15% if you really want them 20, but I would, I would try to stick for less than 10. Yeah, and and Malcolm Brown is obviously still there too. Um, but yep. I mean, he's a guy who's been totally dependent on touchdowns. And so, yeah, when when he scored a touchdown, yeah, he's fine. But other than that, honestly, his average is like three and a half points a week when he doesn't score a touchdown. So, like, you, you're not going to start him. He's not getting the touches that Acres is getting currently, um, or Henderson for those for that matter. So if they're trying to hey the rookie running back knows better blocking protections and knows the offense better now and we're going to give him more playing time that would seem to make a good deal of sense of why cam Akers might be stepping into the to to a main cog roll down the stretch so i would agree with you on the fab spot um i understand going lower i understand going higher it just kind of depends on what position you're in at this point next up we have brian hill of the Atlanta Falcons, who had Yuck. 13 rushing attempts for 55 yards on the ground versus the Raiders, rostered in just over a third of leagues. Ito Smith is also there, who had 12 for 65 and a score. More importantly, um, are you spending any fab on Brian Hill or Ito Smith? No. Because I would expect Gurley to come back. Why? Uh, it's he his did knee not injury. practice all week last. W- yeah, but it's not. <laughs> it's the knee. You need a knee to play I running know. back. I know. Yeah, no, I, I get it. Um, I don't think I'd spend fab on either one of them. Um, and I think you can go pick either one or. OK, let me rephrase that. I think you could spend at least 5% on either of them if you want to. Of the two, it seemed like Edo Smith was the guy, but that's only because they were ahead by so much the entire game and somehow blew out the Raiders, which I will never understand how the hell that happened. Um, but, I mean, do you, <laughs> yes, Gurley has had all of the touchdowns this year. Like the only reason he's been a productive back is because he's scoring touchdowns. It's if of the two, Edo Smith is going to be the goal line back. So I would tend to lean that direction more than I would Brian Hill. And I think you get Edo Smith for nothing. Okay. I I don't really have a whole lot of preference here. I'm just frustrated that in a game where the Falcons scored 43 points, that their replacement running back, Brian Hill, only had 13 for 55, didn't catch a target, didn't get in the end zone. Yeah. And so in right. what future game do you think that they would be able to score that many points and him get into the end zone if he and him be put productive? Up? Exactly. Yeah. And so I guess for that reason, yeah. I don't really want either one of them. If it's going to be a 50-50 split, I preemptively picked up Hill before the weekend in hopes that he would have like a 70% share, 65% share. And it was a 50, 50 and no thanks as far as the touches go. So I don't know. Maybe yeah, it was just game flow. Honest, their they were their schedule kind of sucks. Yeah. Because they're against new Orleans next week. The chargers, um, they're fine, but I don't know the, the chargers throw the ball so much, um, that, you know, are, are they going to be, <laughs> even close in that game and then Tampa Bay and Kansas City like I you really don't want to be starting anybody in those matchups unless you're super desperate um so that's why like I'm cool with rostering them but you're gonna look at them and be like ah, I really can't play them anyway um there was a but, week to play hey, one pick, of them and it was poison. this week yeah and it didn't work so, um no. for Brian Hill owners and you weren't starting Eno Smith so yeah I, I think Ito of the two is probably probably the better play because um, Hill's kind of the change of pace guy or at least was with Gurley and Smith is more of the pounder and when they get to the goal line they're going to give it to Ito Smith who's a bigger body back. Absolutely. Next up we have Devontae Booker 
Josh Jacobs hurt his ankle, which is not good. Um, he was injured in the third quarter, has an ankle sprain. I'm not, I don't know if he's going to suit up week 13 against the Jets. Um, Ian Rappaport says that he has a chance to play. So if he doesn't play, then Devontae Booker, I think, is a great start. Um, I think they're going to be up a million and just run the ball. So Devontae Booker is widely available. He's only rostered in 5% of leagues. They might, because it's the Jets, maybe just give him a week off give Jacobs a week off to rest up the ankle. I don't know. What are your thoughts on Devonte and how it much would not surprise me to see Josh Jacobs play because he, I mean, <laughs> the dude's a beast, right? I mean, they were out of the Atlanta game early. There was no point in putting him back on the field. Um, but in a game where he has a chance to get a little fat against the jets, I would expect him to want to be out there and be out there. Um, health be damned just because that's the kind of guy that he seems to be. Um, I I think you could look at Booker as a speculative ad, um, but I would work under the assumption that Jacobs is going to play. And for that reason, I would not be bidding a bunch on Booker. Yeah, I agree. I guess my thoughts go back to last year when he played for like two months with a broken shoulder blade regardless of the right. record and didn't care and played through the paint. So I think bum, bum wheel and all, I think he's still going to be out there if he can. Maybe if he sits, I would absolutely try and pick up and plug in Booker, maybe stash him until Sunday and drop your defense to try and hold him in case Jacob sits. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's about all I try to do and spend less than 5% of fab doing it. Next, we have the eternal, the never going away. He is eternal. He is to me. He is Frank Gore. He had 18, 18 rushing attempts for 74 yards, three catches for 12 yards, rostered in a whopping 19% of leagues. Everybody knows he's a starting running back, but nobody wants him. He is. Because that team sucks. You should. You should want him. But he is Frank Gore. How much fab are you spending on Frank? You should spend all of your fab on Frank. No, oh, just Lord. Um, I, uh, <laughs> um, I have no reason to not think he's going to have at least 15 to 18 touches in every game the rest of the season, provided he stays healthy. He plays um, the and <sighs> yeah, I understand. I, I I get it, but the touches are there. The touches are just there. So you cannot tell me when he's only had under ten touches twice the entire year, and now he's the only guy there. Quantity's king. Uh, opportunity is is the best. So, um, I mean, if if you're telling me that. That he should not be rostered. I think that's ridiculous. I mean, a starting running back should be rostered in at least 80% of leagues. Um, no matter re- how Regardless crabby. of the team that they're on. Especially if they're the only running back there. Um, so, yeah, Frank Gore. Um, honestly, I would spend 10% fab on him just to get him. And you can plug and play him if you need him. The rest of the season. He's going to be there. He's not going to have the high upside, but he's going to get you at least seven points or thereabouts every week. Um, And if he knocks in a touchdown, then you're in business. Yeah, I got the Raiders this week. And hey, if the Falcons can destroy the Raiders, then so can the Jets. So there you go. Now they're actively tanking. The Jets will not win a game the rest of the season, Um, but they'll score. They'll score some points. There you go. That's what matters. All right. Yeah. You and your 10% of fab can have him. I'm spending like between zero and five because I hate him. Um, yeah. Next up. You shouldn't hate him. DeAndre Washington. 
Uh, had 13 for 49 on the ground for the Finns, plus two for 11 through the air. We already talked about how they have a plus matchup this week against the Bengals. Savin Ahmed and Miles Gaskin were both out. Both might not play this week. In which case, go get you some DeAndre Washington rostered in one half of 1% of leagues. So he is everywhere. What kind of fab are you getting fabulous with DeAndre? What are you spending? This is a 0% bid. I'm um, assuming that Selvin Ahmed is coming back this week. I thought he would be back last week. He's eligible to come off the IR spot. Um, I, I would much rather have Ahmed than Washington, obviously. Um, just a friendly reminder, Salvin Ahmed is only rostered in 45.3% of leagues. He's clearly the ad um, over Washington here because um, I'm assuming he's coming back and he'll be healthy. So I would much rather bid on Ahmed um, or Gaskin for that matter. Um, so Ahmed's 453 um, Miles Gaskin is 69.2. So nice. Gaskin, Ahmed, uh, uh, oh, thank you. Uh, and then Washington would, would be the ads there, um, in that order. Um, I, I don't think Washington's going to do anything the rest of the year. I wouldn't even bother with it, honestly, unless you get to the end of the week and neither one of those guys is playing practicing. Yeah, absolutely. All right. I don't blame you. I'd probably do a zero bid on Washington. Uh, if Ahmed and uh, Gaskin are already rostered in your leagues. Otherwise, I would probably prioritize them in the same order that you mentioned. Next up, our last running back for the week. Oh, actually, I, I'm kidding. That that was the last running back that we have for the week. I uh, got a little excited there. Yeah, just, just one thing to add. I, I would say that, you know, it's always worth every week to just do a sort by you know, recent score, season long score, see who's available in your league that maybe shouldn't be. Um, so like great tip. We, we've talked about Penny the last couple we, we've talked about Penny the last couple weeks as being a, a speculative ad. Uh, I don't think we need to talk about Adrian Peterson, but he was clearly the guy in Detroit this week with Swift out. Um, it was hilarious that Joshua Kelly had his best week in a long time, even though Eckler was back. Um, I, I still probably would not be rostering Joshua Kelly at this point, but just thought the timing was hilarious that he finally does something the week that you're never going to play him. Um, <laughs> but yeah, obviously always, always do like a quick sort of, Hey, you know, do, do it by points and then do it by percentage rostered and then do it by recent scores. See who pops to the top. Um, and, uh, you can somewhat prioritize your bids that way, at least a little bit. Um, you, you never know who might be sitting out there. I mean, Naheem Hines is still available in 24% of leagues. So, um, you know, just, just take a look and, and see who's available to, to pick up an ad that way. All right, let's switch. Uh, let's switch skill positions here. Shall we On to receivers? First up, we have Alan Lazard, future hall of famer, Alan Lazard. Uh, dropped four catches Awful. for 23 yards and a score on six targets in his uh, I don't know if it was his first week or second week back um, but up against Chicago second second week back rostered in 28% of leagues I think he's probably the wide receiver too in that offense um, well, how much fab if any are you spending on Lazard I don't think any um, because Devontae Adams is such a big vacuum in that offense that, you know, on a week to week basis, he might be playable. Um, but the only way that he's going to be a league winner is if Devontae Adams were to get hurt. Um, so he's probably a zero bid ad for me. Um, just because, you know, in his two weeks back, he he's had four targets, six targets. Uh, biggest week was last week, four for twenty three. He did have a touchdown, but that um, that's just not enough to like. You can't play him until he prove like he hasn't been great except for the one game that he played that Devontae Adams didn't play. 
So I, I, I think he's a zero bit add, um, depending on your roster construction. And if somebody else gets him, that's fine. I understand why you would not want to add him. However, I guess my point would be that he had 10 targets against and a touchdown uh, against two of the top 10 defenses against receivers in the Indianapolis Colts and Chicago Bears, Chicago being number two overall against receivers, only giving up 30 points to the position each week. Uh, And the rest of the schedule being very non threatening for me with Philadelphia, Detroit, Carolina, and Tennessee on the slate. So I think if anything, a rod might have an easier time passing and you might see those scores go up. Hopefully uh, that does well for their receivers. So I think Lazard is a nice little ad for end of benches right now. See if he pops next week and then maybe think about plugging him in. Next up, we have Brashad Perriman. That's right. Can't get enough of these J-E-T-S Jets, Jets, Jets. Four for 79 on eight targets. He has 19 targets and more than 200 yards and three scores over his last three games with Vegas up this week, rostered in a whopping 14% of leagues. How much fab are you going to go spend on Brashad Perriman? Okay, first question. Would you drop... Jamison Crowder to pick up Rashad Perriman. Yes. I would drop Crowder for Perriman. I would drop Crowder okay. for Mims. I would drop Crowder for basically anybody. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, I understand that. I mean, Cr- Crowder got off to a really hot start. Uh, it seemed like he was the only guy that was in that offense that anybody would want to own besides Love Bell. And they've definitely shifted away from him um, over the last couple of weeks. So I, I just wanted to put that out there, kind of just start the conversation. Um, I mean, I, I'm a proud Crowder owner, um, but the last three games that Crowder's played, his targets were two, three, and five. Um, that's not enough to say, hey, you should be rostered. Um, on the flip side, Brashad Perriman, his targets the last three games were seven, four, and eight. Um, he's had a touchdown in two of those three games. Um, so yeah, I mean, it seems like Perriman is the guy. Um, now we're talking about multiple Jets players here where they're probably not going to score over 20 points in most games. So there's limited touchdowns to go around. Oh yeah. Um, now, if they're only going to go to if they're only going to go to Perriman or Gore, then OK. But as soon as they go to Crowder or Mims, then that just sucks. Um, so I, I honestly think you can probably get Perriman for a less than 5% bid because um, people probably aren't paying attention to him or that offense. Um, again, to your point, roster only 14% of leagues. Um, but he's somebody that, you know, they're going to be behind. They should have game script in their favor most weeks. Um, and be trying to put up some points in garbage time. And if he's facing prevent defenses, uh, fantasy fantasy football, it doesn't matter when you score the points, it's as long as you score the points. Um, so like, like you think back to like DJ Shark being like a garbage time all-star last year with, um, in, you know, in Jacksonville with, with Minshew. I, I mean, why not? I mean, Darnold's a better quarterback than Flacco. He's back. Um, so yeah, I, I think you get Perriman for less than 5% and I think he's more than playable. I would agree with all of the above. And that brings us to our next wide receiver, Denzel Mims, same team, same field. You already talked about him a little bit. He does have eight targets each game for the last three games. So more targets than Perriman has. Uh, this week he turned them into four catches for 67 yards He also has 200 yards over the last three games, 24 targets over the last three games, rostered in less than five or rostered in about 5% of leagues. I think you could get him for zero bucks. I just think he's a decent end of the end of the bench stash. I am sick of talking about the Jets. (laughs) Wonderful. Let's talk about their opponent. Nelson Aguilar. 
Next up, who dropped five catches for 54 yards on six targets, rostered in 32% of leagues. How much fab are you spending on Aguilar? Um, if you look at it, oh. he he's kind of an every other week kind of guy. And at the Jets, that's a plus matchup. So maybe he pops this week. Yeah. Um, you know, going into last week, what he had touchdowns in five out of seven weeks uh, and and did, obviously did not last week, but it's still five out of eight weeks. Um, so that's good enough. I mean, he's wide receiver 39 on the season. So borderline a potential flex territory. Um, and that's with having a pretty slow start to the season. Um, I would expect, well, I would expect the Raiders offense to be better this week, but I mean, I would have expect also expected them to just absolutely light up the Falcons too. Um, and that didn't really happen. So especially start, uh, starting, uh, Mr. Carr in a league this week where he basically got zero, which was awesome. Um, yeah, but against the jets, um, I think Al Gore is probably a very solid wide receiver too this week. Um, I, I would not be surprised to, to see him be in that category. Um, just because of matchup and him probably scoring a touchdown. So I, I, I think you can probably get him for less than 5% again. Um, you know, he's, he's just not owned in that many places. It seems like people started catching on last week. Um, 21%, he was added in 21% of leagues, but he's still only rostered in 32%. Um, so yeah, you can safely go out and get Nelson Aguilar and start him in my opinion this week against the Jets. So I, I I think 5% and under is more than reasonable. I agree. Any other receivers that I missed? Nothing I'm aware of. Um, uh, I got one more later. But I want to. I want to get these tight I, ends out. Of the I way. hate how how good Tyre. Like, if if here here's my fantasy advice. If you if Tyree kills available in your league, um, you should go out and get him. Um, he's Tyree available kill? in point one percent of leagues. Yeah. What? Wow. It's like a two person league. One I mean, person versus the other. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Bad, <laughs> bad joke. I mean, what a freaking, what a freaking day he had though. 51. I'll take, unbelievable. I'll take it. What was it since the merger or something like only eight other players in history have scored more points than he did since the merger. And oh, I have him and I'm still going to lose. That, just unbelievable. That's, that's disgusting. Um, just, just a couple other guys to add. Uh, I would not add Colin Johnson, who was with the with the Jaguars. Uh, Mike Glennon uh, looked his way quite a bit, but I, I don't think he's worth adding. Uh, DJ Chark theoretically will be back. Uh, T.Y. Hilton, um, or the the corpse formerly known as T.Y. Hilton, uh, had 16 points and a half PPR last week. I, I don't think he's worth adding either. Um, Chad Beebe had his first career touchdown. He's not worth an ad, but he had 13 this week. Um, BC Johnson was fine, but that's only because Thielen didn't play. So there, there is just not a whole heck of a lot of, of guys that are, are sitting out there that, that went off this week that you'd really want to be going and picking up other than the people that we've kind of talked about. Yeah. We've mentioned Jalen Rager a few times, but I mean, in tonight's game, there's only two minutes left. He has three catches for 11 yards. Uh, Goddard has seven for 75 and a score. No other Eagles receiver has more than three catches. So Eagles pass catcher rather. So you hate to yeah, see that. Right. Oh, well, it, yeah, the, the Eagles offense is just real bad, like yep. really terrible. All right, let's get into these tight ends. Shall we? First up, we have Trey Burton. He turned six targets into three catches for 42 yards and a score rostered in a whopping 6% of leagues. What do you think of Trey Burton and the Colts? How much fab are you spending on him? I think you could do a whole heck of a lot worse than Trey Burton uh, at the tight end spot. Um, keep in mind, uh, he was kind of injured to start the season. Um, he, he missed the first three weeks. He's still wide receiver, or sorry, tight end 23 on the year. Um, so it's not like he's been great. Um, but of the last, what, five games he's played? Um, He's had three touchdowns or six games he's played. He's, he's had a touchdown in half of them. Um, yeah, he had a couple disappearing acts in there. But he, I mean, in every game that he's played, he's had five or more targets except for one or sorry, 
four or more targets except for one. Um, and I mean, he does have two rushing touchdowns as well, which is hilarious. Um, so, I mean, for for a tight end that has five touchdowns on the season and he's only played in eight games. Um, given the tight end landscape, I think he'd do a lot worse than Trey Burton. Um, that entire position is dependent on the touchdowns anyway at this point, it seems like, except for a couple guys. So, I mean, he's just as good a dart throw as anybody else. I, I would not spend any fab on him, though. Completely with you on Trey Burton. Um it is interesting that they do occasionally choose to use him at the goal line like they did in week six and eight where he had those one yard rushing plunges. Um, so, yeah, uh, touchdowns in four of the last six games that he's played in Houston up this week, then Las Vegas and Houston again, and then closing it out with Pittsburgh. Not a bad schedule at all. I really think that they're going to be in scoring position oh. a lot. So maybe Trey Boo Boo can find... Yep the end zone again i think he could do a lot worse than somebody that's going to have five maybe six targets a game so i would i might spend a dollar on him or two just because there's going to be a lot of people that are just tired of who whatever crappy tight end they've been plugging and playing and might want to pivot so yeah i bet there could be a lot of zero bids so i'd just drop a buck on him if you want him um Lastly, that brings us to Kyle Rudolph. He had a whopping eight targets, turned him into seven catches for almost 70 yards, rostered in 13.5% of leagues. Are you spending any fab on Kyle Rudolph? So correct me if I'm wrong, but off the top of my head, I believe that the um, the Vikings have like the easiest playoff schedule against the tight end. Um, I'm checking that real quick just so I don't make that up. Um, but as of a couple of weeks ago, yeah, they they were tied for the easiest playoff schedule against, uh, defenses against the tight end. So, um, he, uh, if, if he's going to be targeted that much, then it's reasonable why he's playable. Um, he hasn't really had that many targets prior to this week, but if they're going to start going to him more and a factor of that was was Thielen not being was not playing right but um if he if he's going to be targeted a little bit more then sure he's playable yeah um as you mentioned Thielen was out and then so was fellow tight end Irv Smith so in a game that they had to keep scoring against the Jaguars because for whatever reason the Jaguars are in every game that they play he managed eight targets Carolina. for or excuse me um he plays the Jaguars this coming week. I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, it, I'm just, it's interesting to see all of a sudden that he is producing. I, I wonder uh, how long Irv Smith will be out and how significant that injury is. Um, but it's a groin back injury. I, I I don't know if it's one injury. It's it might maybe it's multiple. It doesn't sound great. I guess so. What was he may, What was he doing to hurt his back and groin at the same time? It's impressive. <laughs> I don't have the flexibility for that. So <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> I I would also say that like uh, you know off off the cuff I was just like hey the Minnesota has the as the easiest schedule for defenses against the tight end and the, but and which is true statistically, but then you go and look at those teams and who they are. It's at Tampa Bay, Chicago and at new Orleans. Uh, those aren't particularly great matchups off the top of your head, but they are against the tight end. Um, and so in those three games where potentially they might be behind and, you know, Delvin cook had that, that, scary injury and then came back by the way he's going to get hurt again and you should still be rostering madison um like you you look at those three matchups and you're like man those are not good tight end matchups but they are uh and so game script might favor the vikings in those three games and rudolph could be productive yeah all right that brings us to christmas time and his last name's rudolph what more analysis do you need than that I, spend I, a, I couldn't. Th- yeah, 
He's a zero bid. Rudolph is a zero there. bid. But all right, that brings us to newsy stuff. That's uh, that. You know what that means? That means that it's time to talk some news. And the news that I have for you is that Will Fuller likes to do drugs. And he likes to do drugs that are illegal for his job and get him suspended for six games. So Will Fuller will be suspended for the final five games of the season as well as the first game to start next year. So what up? Brandon Cooks, uh, former wide receiver, wide, low end wide receiver two, now high end wide receiver two, maybe. And maybe who by, knows on a week to week basis by virtue of injury. Hello, Kiki Cutie. So maybe that's a a viable ad. And stash because he's going to be operating as the wide receiver too in that offense. So he's available in ninety nine point seven percent of ESPN leagues. Are you trying That's to stash? Are you trying to stash Kiki QT and see if he goes off against Indy this week? I mean, their schedule sucks. Indy, Chicago, Indy. Um, but I, they're going to have to throw. I like they're going to let Deshaun throw. So do you add QT if he does well against Indiana? Are you going to start him week one of the fantasy playoffs against Chicago? Uh, probably not. No. Right. I mean, I, I mean, Rogers did whatever I he think wanted. It's just, well, yeah, but I mean, Aaron Rodgers plays them twice a year and just torches them on a yearly basis. Um, yeah, don't I know I've it. seen so many Bears Packers stats. Um, yeah, I uh, I mean, QT is clearly the, the guy there. Um, I would not be surprised to see them use the tight ends more. Um, so, sure. Like, why not? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm with you. Uh, I would stash him it would be hard to start him against Chicago unless he absolutely destroys with like eight to 10 targets in Indy or, or against Indy. So I would probably stash and pray. And I think you could probably get him for less than five fab maybe, but I wouldn't spend yeah. any more than five on him trying to land him anyway. Maybe 10. I, I yep. don't know. Would you go as high as 10? So why receiver two in that offense? You've seen what they've done. No, 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 I wouldn't. You can get him for nothing. I would like nobody else is going to be spending that much. Okay. All right. I would be shocked if they do. All right. And then my last bit of newsy stuff is I am bad at betting the spread. Evidently. Um, had oh, God. A Me too. Had a, had a friendly wager go wrong. Yesterday, if you were on Facebook, you already know. Um, so the spread of last night's game was eight points. Um, Spe speaking of spread, be, just just while I hop in here, the uh, the Eagles were uh, plus six and a half today. They just threw a hail mary. It's now they're now down eight, uh, and they're going for two. So if they get it, they would cover the spread. There's 12 seconds left. They're going for two. Um, Who scored? They handed it off and they got it. The Eagles just covered the spread on a last second Hail Mary. Uh, and like 80% of public money again was on the Seahawks. Um, the Vegas absolutely destroyed people yesterday. Um, I, all of the home underdogs covered. Uh, from a betting perspective, or almost all of the home underdogs covered from a betting perspective. Uh, I, I will let you finish your Packers thing. I bet on the Raiders yesterday. They were minus, uh, minus three, I think. They obviously got destroyed by the Falcons. I bet on Kansas City minus three and a half. Somehow 
the the Tampa Bay Bucks only lost by three in that game. Oh my god, they were up by a million. Yeah, they covered the spread. Oh, Um, I, I bet on. I bet on Arizona minus one against the Patriots who somehow lost that game. Um, they seem like Cliff Kings- Kingsbury uh, tried to lose that game and he was successful. I bet on the Browns minus seven against Jacksonville who gave up a last couple minute touchdown to Mike freaking Glennon. Um, I got absolutely crushed. Oh yeah. And then I bet the Bears um, just like you. Yeah, so I bet the Bears side because I figured eight point spread. There's no way. There's no. There's no fans in Lambo. Like the Bears aren't going to lose by more than eight points, and so no. I was wrong. And so because I was wrong, and they lost by a million, uh, I had to change my Facebook profile picture to Aaron Rodgers, and I had to make a post about how much better the Packers are than the bears and and how they are the superior organization and so with that there were 14 minutes left in the fourth quarter and the packers were winning 41 to 10. (laughs) the packers have won 45 of 64 head-to-head games since i was born the packers have had 13 different starting quarterbacks in the 31 years I've been alive. And that includes all the backups that get spot starts when Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers miss a couple games here and there over the last 30 plus years. And in the last 31 years, the bears have had 35 different quarterbacks compared to the Packers 13. So just rough. Rough being a Bears fan, jealous of everything the Packers have had at the Packer at the quarterback position. Um, and my yeah, that's that's basically that's a bet I lost today or well yesterday that I am still paying for. I don't know how long I have to keep my Facebook profile picture as Aaron Rodgers, but I guess here it is. I don't, I don't know. How long do you think I should keep it up a week? Yeah. And yeah, that's fine. And then like one, you know, one of the games that wasn't started by Brett Favre and Rodgers the last couple of years or, you know, even going back was in 2012 or January 2012. And I specifically remember this because I I was up in Minnesota watching a Bears game. Um, Matt, like Matt Flynn comes in and throws for six touchdowns against the Lions. I remember that game. Even when Rodgers and Favre are there. Yeah, yeah, no, he got paid by the Seahawks a a lot of money, and then and and then Russell Wilson showed up, and they were like, "Why are we going to play this guy?" Right. So yeah, being being a Bears fan sucks. Um, Being a Packer or Packers fan is really lucky. Yeah, it is. All right. With that, let's uh, transfer to the social media page. Thank you guys so much for listening to today's episode. If you found any of it enlightening, entertaining, uh, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, ring the bell if you're watching on YouTube. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Have a good night and go pack go. Oh my, you need to wash your mouth out with soap. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sackos.